Hello everyone, what is up, it is me, LVMTG. For today's video, we have the announcement that released all the rosters for the 2018-2019 Pro Tour Team Series. Of course, I love watching the Pro Tour, and I know quite a bit about some of the players who are on the Pro Tour, some of the regulars, some of the players who even sometimes aren't necessarily regulars, maybe just have had one or two good events. I'll generally know their name, maybe if they're good on the GP circuit, I'll generally know their name as well. So, um, I, I really love the Team Series thing, I think it brings a whole new aspect to the Pro Tour that we were really missing before, because now, um, instead of testing, you know, in teams, being and only knowing, like, who the teams were behind the scenes, if you follow the teams on Twitter or if, or if you followed certain players on Twitter and you got to see them taking pictures in their testing rooms and things like that, that was like the only way that you really know how, you know, certain pro players were connected to one another. But now that we have this pro tier... Uh, this Pro Tour Team Series, there we go, that's how English works, um, <laughs> we can see a little bit more of a connection between the players, we can see that they're working for one, you know, group goal instead of just always trying to win the Pro Tour for themselves, so I think that that's really sweet that they brought in this Pro Tour Team Series, um, this is the third year they're doing the Pro Tour Team Series, the first team to win was Team Musashi, the second team to win was Team Ultimate Guard, and so this will be year number three. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of quickly go through all 39 of the teams, just kind of give a brief little statement about my thoughts on the team, and then we'll go ahead and get into my top eight list for teams for this season. I made some predictions, and so we'll go ahead and check later on and see if my predictions are right once the season finishes up. I think it'll be kind of a cool a video to look back and see how close my predictions were in terms of these Pro Tour teams. Um, and so without further ado, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these teams. So first it was Axie, and now the only name I recognize here is Autumn Burchett, so I, I don't know a ton about this team. Uh, for Team Baguette, the only names I uh, recognize here are the last three, Antoine Ruel, uh, Florian Trout, and Guillaume Wafotapa. Um, these are three players who have kind of, they're not necessarily newer, they're generally much more known for their play in the past, like over 10 years ago kind of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this team, you know, did okay, but in my opinion, they're kind of out of their prime. So um, I think that there's some other teams that could still uh, end up doing better than them. Uh, Belgian Magic by Hare Ruya. I think this is kind of a sweet team as well. I recognize pretty much most of the uh, names on this list, which is kind of uncommon most of the time when you would see names from, you know, a foreign country. Um, most people in the U.S. don't really pay that much attention to um, the foreign magic scene, and so I, I personally would say that I probably pay a reasonable amount of attention to it, probably more than most players, but not, like, a super close, you know, attention to it. But there are some names here that I recognize. Actually, the only name I don't recognize is uh, Christoph... Gr or, no, I do recognize Christoph Gregor or two. I think he, yeah, I think he went 11-5 at the last pro, okay, anyway, um, so yeah, I recognize everyone on this team now that I think about it. Um, the Vierens are quite good players, Peter Vieren and Pascal Vieren, and uh, Bronco Nurchik is a fantastic player as well. I believe he top the two pro tours this uh, last season, um, so very, very good play from Bronco Nurchik. I like this team. This team might end up going a little bit underrated as well. Because, again, a lot of people don't really follow the uh, the foreign magic scene, and so this could be one of the teams that surprises a lot of people. Uh, next up is Team Bolt the Bird. I don't recognize any of those names. So I can't really give too much of an opinion off of them. Um, yeah, uh, Cardboard Live. Uh, I recognize Rob Pisano and Maxwell Mix name and Marcus Long's name. Aside from that, I don't really recognize much of this team. Um, but like it says, they're Pro Tour regulars, so it's possible that they could have a decent year as well. Uh, Card Hoarder Mentoring. Um, I don't think I recognize any of these names as well. Squad of up-and-coming Pro Tour competitors looking to... So they're just trying to stay on the Pro Tour together. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so it's likely that this team probably won't do very well in the Pro Tour Team Series. The Pro Tour Team Series generally favors the uh, teams that are able to have all of their players playing in every single Pro Tour, and it looks like that might not end up happening here with this Card Hoarder Mentoring Team. So it's possible that um, maybe they'll have one player that does you know fairly well in, in an event like let's say uh, Daniel Vega for example wins a Pro Tour, but his other five teammates just like 
don't do very well at that pro tour, then they get, you know, knocked out of the pro tour. They don't requalify. Um, and then it would be really hard for Daniel Vega to carry one team, you know, by himself, uh, as just one player. Um, onto the next one, we have channel fireball. This is a, always a fantastic team. Paulo Vitor, Domitorosa, Martin Yuza, Luis Scott Vargas, Mike Sigris, Ben Stark, and Josh Utter Layton, the only uh, player on this list that isn't a Magic the Gathering Hall of Famer is Mike Sigris, and when your only player who isn't a Hall of Famer is also a former player of the year, your team is pretty stacked. So again, this is just a, f a fantastic team. Uh, three of these players, um, Martin Yuza, uh Martin Yuza, Ben Stark, and Josh Utter Layton at the most recent Pro Tour, Pro Tour 25th anniversary. They were the um, they were the second place team. Um, so this is just again a fantastic team. Some some big names on this on this uh, on this team. Uh, team Eureka. I only recognize uh, Glogowski, um, Papadopoulos, and Tellerob, I believe, or no, Andy Manuel Gergensen too. I recognize that name as well. Um, so again, I don't recognize some of the people on this list, but the names that I do recognize are all fairly, fairly decent players. You can see here, Pro Tour Top 8 competitor, Peter Golgowski. So they do have some Top 8, um, experience under their belt, even if it is just one player. Um, I think it's just one player. Grigginson might have a Top 8, I'm not 100% sure. Um, on to face-to-face -to -face games, Peter Ingram, Ely Cassis, Edgar Magalhaes, Morgan McLaughlin, Gabriel Nassif, and Shaheen Sarani. Um, so I recognize most of the names on this list as well. Gabriel Nassif, again, one of those players I think, um, he's, he's a very popular streamer now, which I think is fantastic. He's done a lot for the, ga the, the game of Magic um, throughout his years um, playing. I just think that maybe his... I'm, I'm surprised he's not on a team with better players around him. Um, I do love, again, I like most of the players on this team. Eli Cassis is sweet, Peter Ingram sweet, uh, Shaheen Sarani sweet. I don't know a ton about Edgar or Morgan, um, but I figure that Gabriel Nassif is a big enough name that Gabriel Nassif probably would have ended up on one of the bigger teams. I'm kind of surprised to see him on a team like this, but again, like it says here, uh, many veterans on this roster, so they could have a pretty decent year themselves. Uh, Final Last Samurai, this team is again one that could just end up being totally underrated. I really like a lot of the players on this list. Atsuki Kahara is a sweet player. If you guys have never seen Atsuki Kahara, let me, hold on. Atsuki Kahara. If you guys have never seen Atsuki Kahara's piercings, they are incredible. Um, let me find, yeah. Let me see if I can zoom in here. So he has like his hair covering up the the left hand side, and then his right ear piercings are just fantastic. I remember when he got on uh, camera for the for <laughs> when he got on camera for the uh, first time at the Pro Tour. I believe he was like playing to see who would go eight and zero on uh, day one of the Pro Tour. A few. It was a few Pro Tours ago, not the most recent one. Um, I would say probably around Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan, maybe Pro Tour M19, some, somewhere in, in there. And when Atsuki Kahara came on the camera and people got to see the piercings, the entire chat was just about the piercings instead of the game. Very impressive piercings, Atsuki Kahara, very impressive. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really like this team more than just... Uh, Kahara's piercings. I like his uh, his style of play. Very well done as well. And then Ryota Tamada is a fantastic player as well. So a good little team here for Final Last Samurai. Geek Gear. This is a team that I only recognize one name if I can remember correctly, and that is Gary Campbell. Uh, Gary Campbell is the oldest player to ever win a Grand Prix. Uh, you can see here Scottish Magic Community Grand or, uh, Godfather Gary Campbell off a historic win at Grand Prix Birmingham. Very nice. Hopefully he does well on the Pro Tour. Um, next up is Team Goat. Again, a team that I think might be a little bit underrated. Um, I really like Gusecki, Jones, Matsukis, and Rolf. I think Mackie's Matsukis is one of the most underrated players on the Pro Tour. Um, he's only been on the Pro Tour for, I believe, three years now. Maybe even less than that. It might be two years now. Um, I, I think it's three. I want to say he's been on the Pro Tour for three years, but the accomplishments he's put up in three years, he's always putting in solid finishes, and I think Magius Matsukas is easily one of the most underrated players on the Pro Tour. Um, so this this team is fantastic, even you know without Matsukas, Rolf Jones, Kaseki, they're all great players themselves. 
uh, team. Good luck, High Five. Again, a lot of these players, I feel, are kind of similar to the team with Guillaume Wafatapa and Anton Ruel. Most of these teams are kind of out, or most of these players on this team are kind of out of their prime now. Um, so I'm not expecting crazy things from them, but it's possible that they could just have a good year. Uh, we just smell Wesco, Fabiano, uh, Cox, Bude, and Babarowski are all just, you know, fantastic players. Kai Bude is one of the, you know, most well-known players ever. He has the most Pro Tour victories at seven, which is, again, just a crazy crazy number um next up team greater good i like this team as well sam black eric frolick quinn Kiefer, steve rubin ben Yu, and david williams quinn Kiefer, for those of you that don't know is one of the youngest players to ever play on the pro tour i want to say quinn Kiefer is like 11 or 12 something like that um and so i believe this entire team was founded on the fact that they want to keep quinn Kiefer on the pro tour and continue to help him improve and so i really like this team of steam steve rubin eric frolick sam black and david williams um ben Yu, i'm not super big on but you know he's he got the ability to team with these other players so he, he's going to have a fantastic year nonetheless um but again the rest of this team i really like it i hope quinn Kiefer has just like the best year ever out of any pro tour player ever i think that would be super sweet uh gray ogre games um i really like yang wing chun he's one of my favorite players but again i'm not super big on this team outside of uh yang wing chun ernest lee has a top eight as well um but aside from that i'm i'm not super big on this team Hariruya Axe. Hariruya has a lot of teams in the Pro Tour series this year, and they're all quite good. Hariruya Axe, Christian Calcano, Jason Chung, Rafael Levy, Tamahara Saito, Peter Sotrick, and Kenji Samura. This team is just crazy. Uh, Tamahara Saito has was sort of inducted into the Hall of Fame at one point. He's not currently a member. There was some cheating allegations against him, um, but since the cheating allegations, he has shown that he's not a cheater anymore and that he's you know playing to a top tier level and still playing to a top tier level uh so he's he's one of the best asian pacific players that the game has ever seen um he, of course he has to stand on his record because of the cheating but aside from that fantastic fantastic player christian calcano definitely a fan favorite and rafael levy uh has the record for the most consecutive pro tours plane um i believe he played in um I want to say it was close to like 40 or more Pro Tours in a row without missing a single Pro Tour, which is crazy. The only reason he missed a Pro Tour last year was because his daughter was born, and so Rafael Levy, or maybe it was the year before, I think I think it was last year, Rafael Levy missed his first Pro Tour in like a crazy amount of time uh, due to his uh, his son or daughter being born. I can't remember if it was son or daughter now that I now that I think about it. Um, Hariru Latin, this is the team that came in second place last year um, in the team series. So again, they're going to have a fantastic year. No changes to their roster. They're going to be great. Uh, Hariru in North America, Ben Hall, Gregory Orange, and Alan Wu all were the winners of Pro Tour 25th Anniversary, so it's possible that this team could put up some good numbers too. Hariru Sword, I love most of the members on this team as well. Javier Dominguez is the 2018 Magic World Champion. Gregor Kowalski is the 2018 Magic World Runner-Up. So this team is crazy. Li Shi Tian is getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. So again, they're really playing at a high level right now. Hopefully they can keep it up and they have the potential to be a really good team this year. KMC Genesis. Uh, some people are calling this team the standard All-Stars team um, because they're very well known for their standard play. Seth Manfield is about to be playing for Player of the Year from 2018 last year. Um, and then Brad Nelson and Corey Baumeister, their brothers who have just taken over standard. Um, whatever deck Brad Nelson and Corey Baumeister play for standard generally becomes the deck of the week because everyone knows that their prowess is in standard and that they're just fantastic at deck choices and playing out. Out, uh, standard as well as Shahar Shenhar being on this team being a two-time world champion as well um, very very nice to see for uh, Shenhar um, Quasimono uh, I, I like some of the players on this team as well uh, Nakamura is the mo he has the most pro points out of any Asian Pacific player ever so he's of course you know, got the history behind him that he's a fantastic player. Yuta Takahashi is quite good, and then Kazuyuki Takamura has a Pro Tour Championship under his belt as well. So um, this is this is a very solid team as well. Team Legion, this team is going to be great. Ben Friedman, Jerry Thompson, Oliver Two, Oliver Tomiko, Noah Walker, and Jacob Wilson. I think this again could be one of the sleeper teams. Um, this 
again, just a fan, an incredible team. Ben Friedman's fantastic at limited, but also manages to put up solid standard results here and there. So if he can do that this season, it's possible that this team can do great. Oliver, too, is a former rookie of the year, so he knows what he's doing. Noah Walker, I just love watching him play. He's a fantastic player. Jacob Wilson came in second place at a previous Pro Tour. Um, I believe it was the modern Pro Tour that Sean McLaren won. Um, so I don't remember which Pro Tour that was, but I know that it was the... I, I believe it was the modern Pro Tour that Sean McLaren won. Um, and then Jerry Thompson, of course, uh, is just an incredible player as well. Um, almost won two Pro Tours last year, which is crazy. He won the Amonkhet Pro Tour with... Um, uh, he won the Amonkhet Pro Tour with the Mono Black Zombies list, and then took second at the Modern Pro Tour, the Rivals of Ixalan Pro Tour with um, Mardu Pyromancer. Only lost, um, only lost in the finals to Luis Salvato, who was playing the um, who was playing the Lantern Control deck. Next up is Magic Sir. Again, I don't recognize any of the names here, so I can't give a great uh, indication of their team. Um, Master Op MTG, I like this team as well. Jack Kiefer is solid. We talked about Quinn Kiefer, how he's uh, one of the youngest players in the Pro Tour. Jack Kiefer is his brother, just slightly older, um, just by like a couple years. Pascal Maynard's a fantastic player. Again, I think Pascal Maynard might be one of the most underrated players on the Pro Tour as well. He's really just known for being the guy who opened the foil Tarmogoy from the top eight of a GP, but he's gone on to show that he can play at a professional level extremely, extremely well. He got second place at Pro Tour Ixalan, so again, I really like this team, MTG Manager, I like some of the players on this team as well. Budakov's a fantastic player, um, being the uh, former Magic Online champion, and then even Giancarlo Pinto, who was the Pro Tour Dominaria uh, finalist. Um, he lost to, I believe, Wyatt Darby during the uh, the finalist or during the finals of Pro Tour Dominaria. MTG Sheep, again, the only name I recognize on here is, or I recognize two names, Liu Chen and Bolin Zhang. So aside from that, I can't really give too much insight onto this team, but Zhang and Yu Chen are both uh, quite good players as well. Um, Musashi, again, this was the team that won the first uh, season for um, the team, the team, the Pro Tour team series. Uh, Yuki Ichikawa, Teruya Kakume, uh, Yuya Watanabe, Kentaro Yamamoto, Shota Yasuoka, and Ken Yukahiro. This team is absolutely fantastic. I love watching Ken Yukahiro play as well. He was the only Asian Pacific player who was able to play at Worlds last year. Um, and then aside from that, just seeing uh, Shota Yasuoka and Yuya Watanabe on the same team is crazy. And then when you put in Yamamoto, Kakume, and Ichikawa with it, this team is just going to be incredible again. They didn't really have a very good season last year, but I think they'll be on the redemption tour this year and they'll definitely make uh, they'll definitely make up for the the not fantastic season they had last year. Um, on this one, the only name I recognize is Jan Cassander. He had a Pro Tour top 8 in, I believe it was Pro Tour Aether Revolt, where he was um, the only player who was playing uh, black green uh, constrictor that made the pro tour or that made the top eight of that pro tour. Um, most of the other players in that pro tour were just on the Mardu vehicles deck, and so I believe he was the only one playing um, uh, constrictor that made it to the top eight of that one. Nerd Rage Gaming, I don't really recognize any of them. Relatively relative newcomers to the pro tour, yep, don't really recognize too many of them. Uh, Omega Card Games. Don't really recognize any of them as well, so I can't give too much insight. This always ends up happening. I always end up talking for infinitely longer than I probably should on these videos. Uh, Phoenix New Dawn, this used to be known as Phoenix 404, but they're just, you know, a fantastic team as well. Um, I recognize Christian, oops, sorry, I recognize Christian Hawk's name, and I believe... Thoralf Severin's name as well, but I don't recognize any of the other ones. But again, Christian Hawk, Pro Tour Top 8 uh, at a Pro Tour Ixalan, so very good player as as well um, for, for that team. Snap Cardster and MTG Mint Card, this is a solid team as well. Martin Mueller's fantastic. Simon Nielsen just won a GP a few weeks ago, I think. Maybe, maybe it was longer than that. Um, very good player though. Christopher Larson's great. Um, Martin Dang's a fantastic player. He was the winner of Pro Tour M15 with Mono Red. Um, so a very good, or no, it wasn't Pro Tour 15. It was Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir. Yeah, it was Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir that Martin Dang won with Mono Red. Um, and then Michael Bond again, just a very good player. Spanish Masters. 
I don't recognize too many of the names on here either. Uh, I believe Alvaro Torres is probably the only name I recognize on here. Uh, team RIW, this is a solid team as well. I really like Max McVetty, Ari Lax, and Corey Burkhart. Um, I don't know as much about uh, Tyler Hill, Zach Allen, and Stuart Parnes, but I do know that if they're teaming with McVetty, Lax, and Burkhart, that they're going to be a solid team. Um, and then we're on to the comic book store. Again, this is a fantastic team here too. Hunter Cochran, Wyatt Darby, Alexander Hain, Mattia Risi, uh, Andre Strasky, and Jonathan Sukenik. Really like watching Strasky play. He just won a G he came in second place on it with a G on a GP the day before he was going to retire. He was like, this is going to be my, my last ride as a, <laughs> as a magic player. And then came in second place in that GP and was like, fine, fine. I'll play another GP. And then won that G that GP the week later. So Andre Strasky, fantastic player. Love that he didn't retire. Love that he's still playing on the pro tour. Happy to see him on this list. Wyatt Darby and Alexander Hain are both pro tour champions as well. So this is a very, very solid team. Uh, Tower Games, uh, the only name I recognize on here is Samuel Einfeld, and again, that was because he was the 2017-2018 Rookie of the Year. Um, so aside from that, I don't really recognize any of the other games, or any of the other names, I should say, I'm sorry. Here we have the team that won last year's Pro Tour Team Series, Andrew Cuneo, Reed Duke, John Fingal, William Huey Jensen, Paul Rietzel, and Owen Turnwald. This team is just incredible on paper. Their statistics are out of this world. John Finkel, arguably one of the best players to ever play the game. In my opinion, I would th I, th I think Finkel's the best player to ever play the game. Um, if at some point you guys want me to do some sort of a ratings where I go over like my top, you know, X number of players to ever play the game, uh, I think John Finkel would end up, you know, just taking taking the number one spot on this list. His accomplishments are phenomenal. Most Pro Tour top eights in history just a fantastic player and then when you you know add that with Andrew Cuneo, Paul Rietzel and then the Peach Garden Oath, Reed Duke, William Jensen and Owen Turtonwall, this this team is just incredible. Um, on to Team Ultra Pro, Andrew Beckstorm, Ivan even Flock, Thomas Hendricks, Matthew Nass, Sam Pardee, and Matthew Severa. This is a very solid team as well. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this team ended up putting up some solid results. Ivan Flock has a Pro Tour championship under his belt as well. He was the winner of Pro Tour M15. Um, Matthew Nass and Sam Pardee are both fantastic players as well. Matt Nass is a fantastic combo player, arguably one of the best combo players in Magic right now. Um, very well known for his play with Clark Clan Ironworks and in the past he was one of the innovators behind the Aetherworks Marvel deck that you know ended up getting Aetherworks Marvel banned he was one of the first people to start playing that or to even mention that Aetherworks Marvel could be a thing um, so very very impressive uh, resume for Matt Nass Sam Pardee again has I believe was a Pro Tour top eight uh, player at Pro Tour Eldritch Moon if I can recall correctly I think he made top four Four, but then lost to either Lucas Blohan or I think he lost. I th I'm pretty sure he lost to Lucas Blohan in the top uh, in the top four. Matt Severa, Andrew Beckstorm, fantastic players as well. And the final team that we have here is Wa Tavern Paris. Uh, again, this is a fantastic team here as well. Uh, Pierre Dejean is a fantastic player. Jo uh, Johnny Manuel de Praz has a Pro Tour top eight under his belt as well, even though he's only been on the Pro Tour, uh, I believe, for about a year now. Um, maybe even maybe even less than a year. Uh, he top eighted his very first Pro Tour with uh, Traverse Shadow. It was the modern Pro Tour, so it would have been Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan. Very good player um, with, for Johnny Manuel de Praz, and I believe he top eighted several GPs since then, maybe even won a GP. Um, so fantastic player here. Um, and then Theo Mary and uh, Remy Fortier are both uh, quite good players as well. So that finally gets us through all of the all of the teams. I have gone through and listed my, my brief opinions on all of them there were a lot of teams to get through so this video is going to end up being longer but now we're going to go ahead and talk about my opinions on who the top eight teams for this year will be again these are just kind of going off of we don't know you know like a lot of stuff a lot of stuff can happen in games of magic right you can you know get mana screwed you can flood out in games that you shouldn't flood out you could you know just end up losing a lot of games to variance and magic sometimes is just one of those games but for some of these players to put up uh, high results at a continuous level for this season they're definitely going to need to play at a top tier level and also get a little bit lucky here and then so um, with that being said we're going to go ahead and talk about my picks for the top 
top eight. Uh, my first pick, uh, the number eight slot, we have uh, Team Final Last Samurai. Again, I said that I really like Atsuki Kahara. I really like... Um, uh, Ryoji Tamada. I think that this team has some potential on it as well. One of the, I I don't want to say one of the weaker teams from the Asia Pacific, but uh, what you're going to end up seeing is that the Asia Pacific has so many teams that are just like insanely good. And so I, it, it would feel wrong to not have, you know, multiple Asia Pacific teams here in my, in my top eight listed because they're so strong um, from that region. And so I think that this is a team that could easily put up one of the um, best numbers, if not the other Asia Pacific team that I think um, has the potential to do so that didn't make the list, they would probably have ended up being number ninth on my list is Kuzimono. Um, this team is fantastic as well. I already talked about Nakamura, Takahashi, and uh, Takamura as well. Um, so this is just, again, another fantastic team. I would probably have put them at ninth on my list. Um, but number eight going to Final Last Samurai. At number seven on my list, maybe a little bit of a controversial pick. Um, most people would expect this team to go higher, but I'm going to go with Channel Fireball at uh, number seven. This team is going to put up fantastic results. They're going to play in every single Pro Tour. They're going to have the best data going into the Pro Tour. Um, and it's really hard for me to root against some of my favorite players, Paulo Vitor, Dom de Rosa, and Martin Yuza. Um, but I'm just kind of expecting maybe not, you know, the best season from him this this time around. It's it's very possible that I could be, and I'm saying not the best season for them all around. They're still seventh on my list for best teams to play in the Pro Tour this year. But I, I'm expecting, you know, maybe not, not, a great, um, not a great finish for them. The first year they didn't really do uh, quite as good as they as they would have wanted to. Last year they did take third, but uh, something that you'll notice on my list is all of the teams that did well last year I think are going to take a little bit of a step back and maybe not have quite as good of a year as they did last year. So um, Channel Fireball here at the number seven spot. Number six, I'm going with Hareruya Sword. Uh, so this is the team of Kelvin Chu, Jeremy Dezani, Javier Dominguez, Gregor Skowalski, Andrea Mangucci, and Lishi Tian. 2018 Magic World Champion, 2018 Magic Championship runner-up with Kowalski and Dominguez. Dezani's a fantastic player as well. Some cheating allegations behind him, but I believe he's past that now, hopefully. A very good player um, who, when, when you know he's playing fairly. He has some Pro Tour top eights under his belt, both in modern and in standard. So uh, good good little player here in Jeremy Dezani. Kelvin Chu is another one of those players from the Asian Pacific area that's just kind of um, made, made a name for himself, mainly for limited and standard play, and most of the Pro Tours are limited and standard, so Kelvin Chu should do quite well over there. Andrea Mangucci always puts up reasonable results, and then Li Shi Tian is uh, the same thing, always putting up fantastic results. So I, I have high expectations expectations for this team. Number five, I have the team that took second place last year, and that is Hari Ruya Latin, Lucas Esper Bertu, uh, Marcio Carvalho, Sebastian Pozo, Carlos Romel, Luis Salvato, and Tiago Saparito. Again, I think they're going to end up taking a little bit of a step back after the fantastic season they had last year, um, but I, I still think that they're going to be a, an incredible team. Uh, this team has so many good names on it, um, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up doing the same thing. For Luis Salvato to have... A, a year equal to the year that he had this year, it would be kind of crazy. I'm I'm not sure he can do it, in all honesty, and I think that will probably uh, drag back some of the team as well. Um, we're also going to need, you know, better numbers from some of the other players on this team if they want to, you know, maintain the top two spots and get to the playoff um, for the team series. Tiago Saparito generally does pretty well, but Sebastian Pozo and Lucas Esper Bertu, I would kind of like to see some uh, some higher numbers from from the two of them. And on to the number four spot. Uh, I'm going with the team that won last year, which is Team Ultimate Guard Pro, tweet, Pro Team. Uh, Andrew Cuneo, Reed Duke, John Finkel, William Huey Jensen, Paul Rietel, and Owen Turnwald. Absolutely fantastic team. Again, similar to the Channel Fireball team, there's just like nothing you can really say that, you know, would show just just how crazy this team is their statistics are out of this world and it's it's hard to say that they wouldn't just easily be number one um, but there are a lot of a lot of fantastic teams this year and I I honestly think that you know they might end up taking a little bit of a step back um, if Cuneo and if Cuneo and Rito can really put up good years then it's possible that they could find themselves back into the number one spot where they ended up last year um, but I mean it's obvious that Duke Finkel Jensen and Turtenwald will continue to put up fantastic results. Um, I think this team really just relies on where Rietzel and Cuneo end up finishing. Uh, number three here, I'm going with Team Legion. 
Team Legion. This is the team of Ben Friedman, Jerry Thompson, Oliver Two, Oliver Tomiko, Noah Walker, and Jacob Wilson. This is kind of my kind of my sleeper pick. Um, I think most people would probably leave this team off of their list, but I have high expectations for them. Oliver Two generally plays at a pretty high level. Many GP top eights under his belt. Many GP victories, I believe, under his uh, under his um, belt as well. Noah Walker is a fantastic player. Love watching him him play. Uh, Tomiko and Wilson are both fantastic players as well. But I think that this team really needs to rely on these top two players to put up good finishes. If Jerry Thompson has half of the year that he had last year, again, this is going to be a fantastic team, and he'll be able to put up great numbers. And I think Ben Friedman is due for his first Pro Tour top eight uh, this year as well. Once surprised me to see that in the slightest very very good players across all of this team former rookie of the year here with Oliver too um, so I think that th this team is going to be um, kind of dependent as well on Tomiko I think Tomiko needs to put up a good a good season this year but I, I think it's very possible that he does as well so this is going to be kind of my, my sleeper pick to make it all the way to the number three slot um, number two on my list I'm going with Musashi uh, Ichikawa Kakume Watanabe Yamamoto uh, Yasuoka and Yukihiro this team's incredible. Watching Watanabe, Yasuoka, and Yukihiro play is like something you've never seen before. They're fantastic players to watch. Um, Yamamoto is a fantastic player. This whole team is fantastic. But watching, in particular, Watanabe, Yasuoka, or Yukihiro play is just incredible. Um, I, I really enjoy watching them play. And... Um, yeah, this team this team is due for a rebound. They didn't really have the best season last year, despite being champions in the year previous. Um, so I think they're back for they're going to be back for revenge this year. I think Sh uh, Shota Yasuoka and Yuya Watanabe not being in Worlds this year is going to be a huge motivator for them this season, and I think that they're going to end up putting up some fantastic results. And my number one team for this year is going to be KMC Genesis. I think that. Doubting the standard play of Seth Mittenfield, Brad Nelson, and Corey Baumeister is just kind of a crazy idea. If they can put up good results in limited or even just like above average results in limited, their standard play will take them far beyond what they need to be to have a good season in this uh, in, in this Pro Tour team series. Um, Seth Manfield, I think, is probably going to win pro, uh, Player of the Year. It's between Seth Manfield and Luis Salvato. They have to do a playoff. I think think I, I think if I had to take a bet my money would probably be on Seth Manfield but again it, you can it, you you couldn't you go wrong with either of those guys they're both fantastic players um, but I'm I'm kind of uh, thinking Seth Manfield might get player of the year for his uh, for his second time but again this team's fantastic former player of the year in Brad Nelson as well so a very very solid team here former world champion in Brian Brondouin and I think that with the standard prowess of Brad Nelson, Corey Baumeister, and Seth Manfield, these teams are always going to be bringing the best possible standard deck to the table. And with these events being mostly standard events, I'm essentially just playing the numbers with this list um, because this team could just, you know, end up dominating the standard portions and most likely will end up dominating the standard portions. And uh, I think I think it's going to be a very a very fun season to watch the Pro Tour, a very interesting one to say the least. And so this is my opinion on my top eight. You guys can let me know your top eight down low in the uh, comment section as well. I know this video ended up going on forever, but you guys know that I love talking about this kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did, be sure to leave a like on the video. Tell me your opinions down low in the comment section regarding my top 8 list and who your top 8 list would be. And of course, I will see you guys here next time for another Magic the Gathering video. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this video. I know this video was a very, very long video. Probably one of the longer ones that I've ever made. Um, so if you made it this far, I greatly, greatly appreciate you, just like I greatly, greatly appreciate my Patreons over on the Patreon page. Jayathi Swarren, Daniel, Jeremy, BadwolfMTG, and Jason are supporting me on the Patreon page. I'm extremely, extremely appreciative of the support that they give me. I'm extremely, extremely appreciative of you just for watching this video all the way to the end. It's kind of crazy to think that people are willing to listen to me talk for that long about something I love. It's it's a crazy feeling to know that it's a, it's just a crazy feeling. Um, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys here next time.